after studying this module you shall be able to know about the significance of Raman spectroscopy, the instrumentation of Raman spectroscopy and its application. Raman spectroscopy is a spectroscopic method grounded on inelastic scattering of monochromatic light generally from a laser source. Inelastic scattering suggests that the incidence of photons in monochromatic light varies upon the interaction with the sample. Photons of the laser lights are absorbed by the sample and then re-emitted. Occurrence of the re-emitted photons is altered up or down as compared to original monochromatic frequency and is called the Raman effect. This shift offers data, repeat, this shift offers data about vibrational, rotational and other lower frequency transitions in molecules. Raman spectroscopy can be used to study solid, liquid and gaseous samples. When monochromatic radiation is dispersed by molecules, a minor fraction of the dispersed radiation is perceived to have a dissimilar frequency from that of incident radiation which is acknowledged as the Raman effect. Ever since its discovery in 1928, the Raman effect is a significant means for the elucidation of molecular structure, for establishing various functional groups or chemical bonds in molecules and for quantitative examination of complex mixtures, particularly major components. Although vibration Raman spectra are allied to infrared absorption spectra, a Raman spectrum occurs in a diverse manner and thus often provides corresponding information. Vibrations that are dynamic in Raman scattering may be stationary in the IR spectra and vice versa. A distinctive feature of Raman scattering is that each line has characteristic polarization and polarization data provides additional information about molecular structure. Now let us see the theory behind Raman effect. The Raman effect takes place when a beam of intense monochromatic radiation passes through a sample that contains molecules that undergo a change in molecular polarizability as they vibrate. On the other hand, for a vibration to be active in Raman effect, the polarizability of the molecule must change during the vibration. Polarizability is the value of the induced dipole moment divided by the strength of the field that causes the induced dipole moment. In other words, the electron cloud of the molecule must be more readily deformed in one extreme of the vibration than in the other extreme. It is strictly a quantum effect. Origin of Raman effect. The Raman effect is established on molecular distortions in electric field E regulated by molecular polarizability alpha. The laser beam can be counted as an oscillating electromagnetic wave with electrical vector E. Upon contact with the sample, it produces electric dipole moment P which is equal to the product of polarizability and the electric field E which distorts molecules. Due to the periodical deformation, molecules begin to vibrate with characteristic frequency mu m. Amplitude of vibration is known as nuclear displacement. Alternatively, monochromatic laser light with frequency mu naught excites molecule and convert them into oscillating dipoles. Such oscillating dipoles emit light of three different frequencies. When a particle with no Raman active modes captivates a photon with the frequency mu naught, the energized particle returns back to the same basic vibrational state and emits light with the same frequency mu naught as an excitation source. This type of interaction is known as elastic Rayleigh scattering. When a photon with frequency mu naught is captivated by Raman active particle which at the time of interaction is in the basic vibrational state, part of the photon's energy is transmitted to the Raman active mode with frequency mu m and the subsequent frequency of scattered light is reduced to mu naught minus mu m. 
This Raman frequency is known as Stokes frequency or just Stokes. When a photon with frequency mu naught is absorbed by Raman active molecule which at the time of interaction is already in the excited vibrational state. Excessive energy of excited Raman active mode is released. Molecule returns to the basic vibrational state and the resulting frequency of scattered light goes up to mu naught plus mu m. This Raman frequency is called anti-Stokes frequency or just anti-Stokes. About 99.99% of all incident photons in spontaneous Raman undergo elastic Rayleigh scattering. This type of signal is useless for practical purposes of molecular characterization. Only around 0.001% of the incident light yields inelastic Raman signal with frequencies mu naught plus minus mu m. Spontaneous Raman scattering is very weak and special measures should be taken to differentiate it from the predominant Rayleigh scattering. Instruments such as notch filter tunable filters, laser stop apertures, double and triple spectrometric system are used to reduce Rayleigh scattering and obtain high quality Raman spectra. You can see Raman transitional schemes for Rayleigh scattering, Stokes Raman scattering and anti-Stokes Raman scattering. Coherent anti-Stokes Raman spectroscopy. Coherent anti-Stokes Raman spectroscopy depends on the fact that when a molecule is polarized by an exciting field, the polarization contains term that involve the square, cube and so on of the field strength, also the first power. Because of the non-linear terms which become important only when the exciting field or fields are very strong, as in the laser excitation, the molecule can combine several photons to yield another photon of different but related frequency. Surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. Raman scattering is enhanced when the annihilate is adsorbed on colloidal metallic surfaces. Silver, gold and copper are the metals found to be the most effective. For colloidal silver particles, the enhanced factors are typically 10 to the power of 3 to 10 to the power of 6 times the normal Raman intensities. Surface enhancement and resonance enhancement effects are roughly multiplicative thus leading to large Raman signals and low detection limits often in the range of 10 to the power of minus 9 to 10 to the power of minus 12. Instrumentation Raman system typically consists of four major components excitation source, sample illumination system and light collection optics, wavelength selector, filter or spectrometer, detectors, photodiode, array, CCD or PMT. A sample is normally illuminated with a laser beam in the UV, visible or near infrared range. Dispersed light is collected with a lens and is sent through interference filter or spectrophotometer to obtain the Raman spectrum of a sample. The most important function of Raman spectrometer is clean denial of the intense Rayleigh scattering and finding of a weak Raman shifted components. A computer adds appreciably to the power and versatility of the spectrometer. An intense monochromatic radiation source, sensitive detection and high light gathering power coupled with freedom from external stray radiation must be built into a Raman spectrometer. Raman scattered radiation is dispersed using gratings with 1200 grooves per millimeter and finally passes through a monochrome to the photomultiplier tube. The photomultiplier tube is placed in a thermoelectric cooler up to the temperature of minus 30 degrees markedly lowering the dark current and reducing noise thus providing a high sensitivity and favorable signal to noise ratio. In this particular instrument, the signals from the detector are amplified and counted with two photon counting system, one of which is for the detection of the ordinary Raman spectrum, while the other is for calculation of the depolarization ratio. These signals are displayed graphically as a function of wavelength or frequency. 
Photon counting is recognized as the most effective means of recovering low level Raman signals. On the other hand, inexpensive D amplifiers are excellent for strong signals. They provide the required range but suffer from low signal to noise ratio for weak signals. One can combine the best of both these techniques by operating the amplifiers as a photon counter with a built-in discriminator for low level signals and when the signal is strong enough, automatically switching in the D system for the remaining levels of amplification. The intermediate slit has a vertical mask that allows the height to be shortened when one is running a solid sample or using the transverse illumination technique or micro samples. Masking of the intermediate slit reduces the spectral background and enhances the signal to noise ratio. The operation of the Raman spectrometer except for the selection of slit widths and height is controlled automatically. The slit width selection wheel is linked directly to the electronics so after the scanning speed and slit width are determined. The time constant is automatically selected to exactly match the criterion. Time constant is equals to the spectral bandwidth divided by the scanning speed multiplied by 4. A precise electronic master clock provides pulses to the stepping motor that operates the scanning system and to the stepping motor that operates the XY recorder. Through its solid state drive work circuit, the master clock maintains the correct ratio between the pulses so that scanning speeds can be varied independently from the range of the recorder. The Jobin Vion instrument combines the through output of a double monochromator system with the rejection levels of a triple monochromator system. The monochromator is designed to reduce stray radiation by using two concave abrasion corrected holographic grating with 2000 groups per millimeter. Both gratings are on the same shaft, thus the tracking error is zero. The scattered radiation from the sample is gathered by a high aperture objective lens, which focuses the radiation onto the straight horizontal entry slit of the first monochromator. Radiation that enters slit is then diffracted and focused onto the exit slit of the second monochromator by the concave grating. All four slits are individually controlled by the stepping motor. This permits complete versatility with the computer in order to obtain spectra at either constant slit width or constant band pass. Photographic detection has given away almost entirely to the photoelectric detection. The choice of photo tube response depends on which laser line is used. Sample handling and illumination. The use of laser excitation allows Raman spectroscopy to be performed on specimens in almost any state, liquid solution, transparent solid, translucent solid, powder pellet or gas. Liquids are usually examined with a single pass of laser beam either axially or transverse to the neat liquid sample contained in a glass capillary tube. Water is a weak scatterer and therefore an excellent solvent for Raman work. This has important consequences in studies of biochemical interest and in the pharmaceutical industry. Other widely used solvents are carbon disulfide, carbon tetrachloride, chloroform and acetonitrile. Nevertheless, pollutant studies of emissions are being made from considerable distances from the point of release. Powders are tamped into an open-ended cavity for front surface illumination or into a transparent glass capillary tube for transverse excitation. Forward sample illumination provides superior collection efficiency that is better signal to noise ratio. Structure analysis. In Raman spectroscopy, those vibrations that originate in relatively non-polar bonds with symmetrical charge distribution and that are symmetrical in nature produce the greatest polarizability changes and are the most intense. When a polarized beam of radiation is incident upon a molecule, the induced oscillations of the electron in the molecules are in the same plane as the electric vector of the electromagnetic wave. 
Thus, the resultant emitted radiation tend to be polarized in the same plane. If one assumes a Cartesian coordinate system around a sample placed at the origin with the incident radiation along the x axis and observation of the Raman effect at 90 degree say along the y axis, two situations are possible for observing the depolarization of the incident radiation caused by the molecule. In one situation, the polarization of the incident radiation is changed and the variation in intensity of the emitted radiation is observed. In the other and most used situation, the polarization of the incident radiation is fixed and the polarization of Raman radiation is observed in two different planes. In the first situation mentioned, the incident radiation is polarized in the xy plane and then in the xz plane. Unless the molecule depolarizes the incident radiation, the intensity viewed along the y axis will be 0 for the parallel illumination and a maximum for the perpendicular illumination. This is because to observe an electromagnetic wave, the electric vector must have a component vertical to the line of motion of the wave. In the second situation, the incident radiation is polarized with its electric vector in the xz plane. The resultant Raman radiation observed along the y axis will have a greater intensity when viewed through a polarizer that passes radiation polarized in the yz plane then through the polarizer when oriented at 90 degree to pass the radiation polarized in the xy plane. If the molecule does not depolarize the radiation, the intensity of parallel radiation will be 0. Quantitative analysis The determination of the absolute radiant powers of Raman bands is even more difficult than the determination of the absolute radiant powers of infrared absorption band. For quantitative analysis, the power of Raman lines is directly related to the number of scattered molecules and thus to the scattering coefficient. For mixtures of similar type, there is a straight proportionality between the scattering coefficient and the volume fraction of the compound present. For dissimilar type, Raman shift vary amongst the range of compounds and a broad band is recorded at the position characteristics of these bond types. Comparison of Raman with infrared spectroscopy. Raman spectroscopy offers distinct advantage over the more direct infrared absorption measurement. Raman spectroscopy is used to detect and analyze molecules with infrared inactive spectra such as homonuclear diatomic molecules. Hence, a Raman spectrum reveals information about the backbone structure of the molecule, whereas strong infrared features are indicative of polar segments. Raman spectra are used to study materials in aqueous solution, a medium that transmits infrared radiation very feebly. Another advantage is the ability to examine the entire vibration spectrum with one instrument, unlike infrared spectroscopy in which the far infrared is usually scanned separately from the mid infrared. For quantitative determinations, the Raman scattering power is directly related to the concentration whereas in infrared spectroscopy, it is the logarithm of the ratio of incident to transmitted power that is the absorbance that is relative to concentration. Finally, sample preparation for Raman spectroscopy is generally simpler than that for infrared. The sensitivity of resonance Raman spectroscopy to only chromophore vibration modes may be considered either strength or a weakness. Spectra are normally very much simplified and a series of molecules that contain slightly different chromophores give spectra that are easily distinguished. On the other hand, if a series of molecules contain the same chromophores, for example, different aliphatic side chains and the resonance Raman spectra are nearly identical. There are some shortcomings of Raman technique. Both liquid and solid samples must be free from dust particles or Raman spectrum may be masked by the Tyndall scattering. The main drawback of Raman spectroscopy is the fluorescent background 
that accompanies intense laser irradiation of many biological materials. Proportional to the Raman signal, the background can be massive, entirely obliterating the spectrum. Even if one could observe Raman spectrum superimposed on the fluorescence background, the noise contribution to the fluorescence emission degrades the signal to noise ratio of the Raman spectrum. Although the problem can be attacked by careful sample preparation, time resolved spectroscopy or coherent anti-Stokes Raman spectroscopy, there will always be experiments that remain difficult to perform. Applications of Raman spectroscopy. Some of the applications of Raman spectroscopy in the physical, inorganic and organic chemistry are as follows. Applications in inorganic chemistry. Raman spectroscopy is utilized to study the structure of CO2, N2O, mercurous salt, chloro complexes of mercury, the nature of bonding, etc. Application in physical chemistry. Raman spectroscopy helps to study physical chemistry concerning electrolytic dissociation, hydrolysis and transition from crystalline to amorphous state. It has also been used to study the single crystal and is much recommended over infrared technique. Application in organic chemistry. It is used to obtain information regarding the presence or absence of specific linkages in a molecule, the structure of simple compounds, study of isomers, the presence of impurities in dyes and also the categorization of compounds. Application in polymer chemistry. Raman spectroscopy is used for characterization of polymer compounds by revealing the physical properties as how the molecules are arranged, polymer crystallinity, tacticity and amorphous character. Quantitative analysis. Raman spectroscopy can be easily used for rapid, easy and accurate analysis of mixtures that are troublesome with any other method. This technique has its advantage over infrared spectrophotometry and for these reasons it has been widely exploited for quantitative analysis. Now let us summarize. When monochromatic radiation is dispersed by particles, a small fraction of the dispersed radiation is detected to have a different frequency from that of the incident radiation. This is known as Raman effect. The Raman effect takes place when a beam of intense monochromatic radiation passes through a sample that contains molecules that undergo a change in molecular polarizability as they vibrate. The most important function of Raman spectrometer is clean denial of the intense Rayleigh scattering and finding of the weak Raman shifted components. Raman spectroscopy is used for qualitative and quantitative analysis. Raman spectroscopy is used in inorganic chemistry, physical chemistry, organic chemistry and polymer chemistry.